Hello Matrix. Now for the fun part, applying what you have learned. Have your toolkit at hand as you work through these exam questions. Read the questions carefully, study the sketch, analyze. In this exam prep part one, there are two questions focusing on pre-grade 12 content. And in part two, four questions where all the content is integrated. Have your pencil and paper ready. Pause as often as you need and for as long as you want. Pause while you try question one. I would like to suggest an approach, a way of thinking. Note the significance of the information. Axis intercepts, E and F. And again, axis intercepts, A and M. Line EF having the equation y equal to 3x plus 8. True for all points on the line. And angle of 45 degrees here, equal to vertically opposite angle ADE. Maybe pause to try the questions again. The coordinates of E. E is an x-intercept, and it is a point on the line. Think about that. Angle DAE is an angle of inclination. The equation of AB. We have point B. Can we find the gradient? We have the angle of inclination. And AB also has the general form equation, x minus 2y plus 9 equals 0. The coordinates of D, its significance is that it is the point of intersection of our two graphs. The area of quadrilateral DMOE, no particular quadrilateral, therefore no particular formula. Check your answers in the following slides where memos are provided. The coordinates of E. As an x-intercept, the y is 0, and as a point on the line EF, y also equals 3x plus 8. We equate and arrive at that answer. Angle DAE. The exterior angle of triangle DAE is equal to angle DAE plus 45 degrees. And this exterior angle of the triangle is also the angle of inclination of line EF with the equation y equals 3x plus 8, the gradient of which is therefore equal to 3. Therefore the tan of FEO is equal to 3 and we can calculate its value. Therefore our angle DAE is equal to angle FEO subtract 45 degrees. Check your answer. The equation of AB B is a point on the line, and the gradient is equal to the tan of the angle of inclination. Therefore, m, the gradient, is a half. So we substitute m equal to a half and the point in either of the forms of the equation of a straight line, and we arrive at this equation, as requested in standard form. This equation is in general form and is equivalent to the equation in standard form in the previous question for this line AB. The coordinates of D as the point of intersection of these two graphs. It obeys both equations, the equation of AB and the equation of EF. There is no need to convert this equation into the standard form. Use it as it is. Just substitute 3x plus 8 from this equation into the y of this equation. And we then solve for x. Check your answer. The quadrilateral DMOE. There is no formula for that area. But if we take triangle MAO and subtract triangle DAE from that, we are left with the required area. Triangle AMO has a base AO and a height MO, both of which we can derive from the standard form of the equation of AB. 
The y-intercept of 4.5 gives us the length of 4.5 units for MO, and a gradient of 1 over 2 gives us a length of 9 units for OA. Or we could have found A and M as axis intercepts from the general form of the equation of AB, which we found in 1.4. So the area of triangle AMO is a half its base times its height. And now the area of triangle ADE. The base AE can be found from the x-coordinates of A and E, and the height is the y-coordinate of D, which is 3 and 4 fifths. And the area of the quadrilateral is therefore 8,22 square units. Now pause while you try question 2. Did you notice the significance of the information? Let's go through this question together. The angle of 45 degrees in this drawing is the angle of inclination of the line PQ. The length of QP is given. And N and M are the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. And the midpoint theorem applies. Therefore MN is parallel to PQ and the length of MN is half the length of PQ. And now, when you read the questions, analyze what you need. For the gradient of PQ, you have the angle of inclination. For the equation of MN, you have a point, and you know that parallel lines have equal gradients. The length of MN is simply half the length of PQ. And for PQRS to be a parallelogram, we need to consider the properties of a parallelogram while working out the coordinates of S, a point on the parallelogram, a vertex of the parallelogram, and the length of RS. And then finally, the coordinates of P, there are two unknowns, A and B, Therefore, we need two equations in A and B. Think formulae. Pause while you do these questions. Pause at any stage while checking your solutions in the next few slides. The gradient of PQ is simply the tan of the angle of inclination and therefore equal to 1. The equation of MN, we have the point N, and we know that the gradient of MN equals the gradient of PQ, as in parallel lines. So we substitute M equals 1 and the point in either of the forms of the equation of a straight line, and arrive at this answer. Again, the midpoint theorem. The length of MN is simply half of 7 root 2. PQRS, a parallelogram. The coordinates of S. There is not enough information to use the sides of the parallelogram and projecting the coordinates of vertices from Q to P, same as R to S, or from Q to R, same as P to S. But, what other property of a parallelogram can you think of? Draw in diagonal Q and S. N is the midpoint of this diagonal, since the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect at their midpoints. So, by projection from Q through N to S, the X coordinate increases from minus 2 to 7 by 9 units, and therefore we increase 7 by 9 units to get to the x-coordinate of s being 16. The y-coordinate increases from minus 3 to 1 by 4 units, therefore we add 4 units to 1 to get the y-coordinate of s, namely 5. The length of rs is very simply equal to the length of qp as opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. Lastly, the coordinates of P, with unknowns A and B. We know that the gradient of PQ is equal to 1, 
and that the length or distance of PQ is equal to 7 root 2. And so we involve A and B in these two formulae to produce two equations in A and B which we solve. This equation and that equation. And we arrive at two options for AB, namely 5, 4 or a point with negative coordinates. But A and B are both positive, this was given, but we can also see in our diagram that this point is in the first quadrant and therefore A and B should be positive and 5, 4 is our answer. Thank you for listening to this introductory exam prep video where our approach was to interpret significant information and then in the questions to analyze what we needed. Be inspired as you apply this approach to the four mixed questions in the last video of this series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.